Hi, my name is Adam Wiener. I'm a urologist in Los Angeles, California at Cedar Sinai Medical Center, and I have a, a particular focus in prostate cancer. It's been a wonderful transition in the past decade seeing the management of low risk prostate cancer evolve over time now to the point that we know that the preferred management approach is active surveillance for our patients with grade group one prostate cancer. So these study authors looked at two major data sets in the United States, one that looks at the entire United States and one that focuses just on those patients treated in Michigan. And they found substantial declines in the percentage of patients who get surgery for prostate cancer that have grade group one prostate cancer. So for instance, in the entire United States, it's dropped from about a third to uh, less than 10% of uh, patients who get surgery have grade group one prostate cancer. And then even better in Michigan, it's uh, is now as low as 3% of patients who are getting surgery are um, grade group one prostate cancer. So this is evidence of substantial uh, achievement in changing the paradigm for these patients and improving our care. ARINO was an extremely important landmark trial on prostate cancer. Uh, the past five, ten years have seen uh, so many achievements in how we change our approach to patients with uh, hormone-sensitive metastatic prostate cancer, and now we have many options for these patients. Arino looked at the addition of darolutamide to hormone therapy and saw that darolutamide was able to prolong time for, uh, to recurrence for those patients. Importantly, when we introduce a new systemic therapy to prostate cancer, it's it's very much a goal that we make sure that it's something that's efficacious for all of our patients. And we know that disproportionately, in particular in the United States, uh, black patients suffer more from uh, death from prostate cancer and more advanced prostate cancer. So the study authors here did a subgroup analysis of the ARINO randomized controlled trial and looked at the 10% of patients that were of uh, black ancestry. So of those patients, and there are a little bit more than 60 in that study, they showed that uh, the patients who got darolutamide did have a benefit in terms of recurrence, uh, or sorry, progression-free survival in a way that uh, was similar to the entire group. So this is incredibly important work uh, when we are uh, counseling our patients that come from a, a diverse background. I think, uh, again, as we approach uh, management for our patients with uh, metastatic hormone sensitive prostate cancer, now that we have so many options, it's going to be important to continue to look back at the trial data and assure ourselves that these drugs are just as good for all patients. So I think we're going to continue to see more works like this. And I'm encouraged by that because, again, that just helps us with our counseling. So the Embark was a landmark trial for uh, patients with prostate cancer who have what we call high-risk biochemical recurrence. So their PSA doubling time is very short. These patients very quickly progress to metastatic disease. And for a long time, uh, there wasn't really a treatment option for these patients. But with the publication of Embark, we now know that uh, giving them uh, ADT plus enzalidomide or enzalidomide alone can help prolong the time uh, that they do exper experience a, a metastatic recurrence. Uh, the main benefit, one of the main uh, benefits of that study is it adds a treatment paradigm in which we start these systemic therapies but then allow for a treatment holiday when we see that the PSA uh, responds well. And that's different from when patients have metastatic prostate cancer. We don't really have that uh, in that space. So for these patients with high-risk uh, biochemical recurrence, we can get them off this, the therapy for a duration and allow them to recover their testosterone and improve their, their quality of life. So in the original trial, we showed that when patients, they showed uh, when patients were on these treatment holidays that they did have improvements in their quality of life. The question was, uh, do they actually recover their testosterone? And is that reflective of that quality of life? And um, the authors went ahead and did a post-hoc analysis of their clinical trial and did show that greater than 80% of those patients who come off the drug recover their testosterone. So uh, great evidence to support that. Uh, not only is it great that we have an option for those patients, but that we can also uh, give them a time off therapy so that they can focus on their quality of life. So I, 
I do think the most important thing we can take away from something like Embark is that it's very different from just starting someone on a permanent systemic therapy for metastatic prostate cancer. Uh, we are allowing that these patients can focus on their quality of life uh, by giving them this treatment holiday that we know uh, does not compromise uh, their oncologic outcomes. But niraparib has been introduced into prostate cancer and many cancers as another uh, inhibitor of PARP. So something uh, where the tumors already have a difficulty with DNA repair, you give them a drug that makes that DNA repair even more difficult and that makes it difficult for the cancer to progress. That's the most uh, broad way of describing niraparib and all these PARP inhibitors. Uh, these are very interesting to patients with prostate cancer because it's a non-hormone therapy based medication that could potentially improve oncologic outcomes. And we have seen that it does work for patients with uh, castrate resistant advanced prostate cancer. We're starting to see trials report for um, hormone sensitive prostate cancer. So uh, this is a, an attempt at looking at even earlier stage disease. So uh, these patients in this small clinical trial, only 11 patients, they received a neoadjuvant niraparib uh, prior to prostatectomy. All of them had unfavorable or high-risk localized prostate cancer, and all of them had some kind of uh, DNA repair uh, gene mutation. The, uh, the primary outcome for the study was looking at complete pathologic response. So when the prostate came out, was there any cancer left or was there a minimal amount of cancer left? And they found in the end that there uh, weren't any complete pathologic responses. And um, while this is not a home run study, it's important for us because I think this is, these are the kind of steps we need to take to figure out are there non-hormone therapy based options that we can offer these patients with early stage prostate cancer. I think we're all interested in that and again even though this was a negative study it's, it's still important that we learn from it.